Amen. God bless you. We welcome you here to Mount Zion. How about you give God praise if you're happy to be in the house of the Lord today? Everyone out there in your cars, honk your horn. We got a rainy, kind of snowy day, but God is still on the throne and God is still good. Amen. 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 We're happy to see you today. We welcome everyone that is viewing online, anyone that turned around in the bed maybe and they saw the rain and it was kind of easy to, you know, sit there and stay in the bed. But I celebrate everyone that made it out today to celebrate the name of the Lord with us. Well, today is a special day. What day is it? This is what? What day? We celebrating who? You better not mess up Mother's Day. Out of everybody to celebrate, you better make sure you celebrate your mothers. Let's give God praise for all our mothers that are here today. Hey, man, we have something special in store for all of our mothers to celebrate our mothers. We love you all. We have some, some great things in store for you. Well, hey, man, how many are ready to worship and praise the name of God? God has good, been good to you. I just want to open this up in, in scripture and prayer before we get started here. I just want to inspire you to think supernatural. Think supernatural. You know, when we think about life, God has more in store for you. That's what I believe. You have not seen all that God wants to show you in life. You have not heard all that God wants to say to you in life. If you've had a miracle in your life, I believe that God has more in store. He has more miracles in store for you today. And there's a scripture that gives us a little warning here of what not to do. In Mark, it says this, Mark chapter 6, it says, And because of their unbelief, he couldn't do any miracles among them except place his hands on a few and heal them. In scriptures, it's amazing to find out that there is a place where Jesus could not do miracles miracles and that place was called unbelief unbelief because if you want miracles from God God shows up where there are believers that do I have any believers in this place right now and in this place I believe that God has some great things in store but you must believe you must believe you got to think about over your life and there may have been times you have missed a miracle because of your unbelief because you were negative, you had someone talk you down or the circumstances that were around you talked you away from believing that God could do something in your life. But I want to tell you this morning that there is power in your belief. I said there is power in your belief. Do not put limits on God. And I believe that today as we praise and worship God, as you receive the word of God today, I believe that your faith is going to rise up and it's going to open up doors that are great and great doors that God has in store for your future, full of miracles, full of blessings, full of direction, full of promotion, full of healing, because we serve a great God. How many of you believe and receive that word this morning? Well, amen. Let's just go to God in prayer. If you could just lift up your hands to the heavenlies all around the sanctuary. If you're out there in your car, if you could just lift up your hands right there in the car where you're at right now. We want to receive all that God has in store for us today. I tell you, God has a word for you today, a life-changing word. God has a blessing in store for you. God has miracles in store for you, but you must believe. We are believers, those that believe in the power of God. And Father God, today, Lord, we believe in you, Father. We believe, Lord. We believe, we believe, Lord, in your power, Lord. We believe, Lord, that, that you can do what no other power on earth can do, Lord. We believe, Lord, that you have healing power, Lord. We believe, Father. And on this day, Lord, we want to receive all that you have in store for us, Father, today, Lord. We thank you for the faithful people of God that are here today, Lord, that are in the parking lot today, Lord, that are viewing online, Father. The faithful people that have come, Lord, to hear from you, Father, Lord. So come into this place in your mighty way so we can feel your power and your presence and hear what you have to say to us on this day, Lord. And we are going to give your name the praise, the glory, and the honor because we are believers and we know that you deserve it all, Lord. So we send it to you. And we pray these things in your precious name. Let all the people of God shout. Amen, amen, amen. Come on, let's praise God today. Come on, I'm telling you, let's uplift the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. There's a praise in this house. Everybody. Everybody, everybody, everybody. 
Thank you, Lord, for all of our mothers that are here today. Thank God for our mothers. Come on, you can give God some praise for all of our mothers that are here today. Thanking God again for the mothers that are here. And even for the mothers that are not here, there are some people today, maybe your mother has gone on to glory. But I want to tell you today that God still has her spirit all around you today. Come on, give God some praise if you believe mama's spirit is still around today. So today is not a sad day. It's not a day to be down. It's a day to be joyful. Joyful unto God because God still blesses, because God still heals. And we thank God for the time that we're sharing and the time that we had to share with our mothers today. But right now is a good time to thank God for clothing on your back, for food on your table. This is the moment where we shouldn't overlook the blessings that God has given us. All this week, the world is focused on what we don't have, but we should right now be focused on what we do have. We've got joy in Jesus Christ. We've got peace that passes all understanding. We've got a healer that's available to us if we just bow our heads and humble our hearts today and let him know that he's worthy of our praise today. Even if you're in the lot, I want you to bow your heads and praise God, even those online. This is the church right now. We're praising God and we're letting him know that he deserves our worship. He deserves our praise today. He's a mighty God. He's, a, he's an awesome ruler. He is the King of Kings. He is the Lord of Lords. And we're going to say hallelujah to the King of Kings today. Let's just bow our heads. Heavenly Father, we thank you, God, that we could worship you here today. We thank you that even on a rainy day, God, we've got sunshine, God. We know, Father, that you're shining down your love on us right now. We pray if there's anybody here today that has some challenges, God, we ask that you would help to clear the way for them, God. Clear the path. Clear the fogginess in their life, God. Help them to know that you'll never leave them nor forsake them. Because we feel your presence right now, it shows us that tomorrow can be a brighter day. So, Father, we stand here and declare that you deserve it right now. You deserve the honor. You deserve, again, our praise. You deserve us to lift up our voices upon the hills from whence cometh our help because we know that our help comes from you. And we won't forget all the good things you've done for us. In Jesus' name we pray. And all God's people said, amen and amen. Come on, give God some praise right now. Amen, amen. You may be seated in God's house. Good morning, Mount Zion. How's everybody doing this morning? If you're just blessed, can you give God a hand clap of praise one more time? Amen, amen. It's so good again to see you and to have you here at worship today. We're so blessed on this special Mother's Day. As Pastor Dan talked about earlier, we're celebrating again all the wonderful mothers that are here today. So I want you to watch our ministry announcements, but we also have our ministers who gave us some special tributes to mothers. Can you give all of our women ministers a great big hand clap for doing that for us? So let's watch and see what God has here at Mount Zion. Midweek Connection every Wednesday. Connect with us every week for prayer, worship, and a word all online. All you need during the week can be accessed from mzov.org or visit and subscribe to our MZOV YouTube page. It is impossible to serve God without serving others. We want to connect with those who have a passion to serve on a greater level. Many of our network nonprofits in Greater Cleveland are searching for volunteers and supporters. Also, there are job opportunities in home health care available. Call the church so we can connect you. Stay healthy and centered during the week with us. In partnership with Oakwood Village, there will be free yoga sessions for women on Wednesdays at 1030 a.m. and Fridays at 11 a.m. Join these socially distanced yoga sessions and stay healthy. Prayer is the world's greatest wireless connection. Connect with God in our prayer room or garden any day of the week. The prayer room is located right across from our church main office. The prayer and meditation garden is located right in the back of the church with greenery and benches. We are thankful for those who serve. 
we are blessed to have sent 36 cases of toiletries for families to the Bedford City Schools Resource Center. As a part of our 250 Seniors a Day meal program, we sent blankets and personal toiletry items to seniors at three nursing homes in our area. We received messages of gratitude from them. Amen. Don't Give God some praise for that. Be the Amen. blessing other people can count on. It's me, Minister Lisa. Happy Mother's Day. I just wanted to take a moment to come by and acknowledge all of the individuals who have lost their mothers during this season of Mother's Day, whether it was in the past or even if it was recent. I wanted to take a moment to let you know that God sees you. According to his word in Psalms 139, it says he sees us no matter where we are and he hears us no matter where we are. So during this time, let's take a moment and settle our spirits and listen. For God speaks in a small, still voice. And in that still voice of God speaking, we will hear our mothers. We will hear their wisdom. We will hear their encouragement. Sometimes we may even hear their correction. This is such a blessing for us to have during this Mother's Day season. Mount Zion, family and friends. I'm Minister Renee Rivers, and I want to wish all moms a happy Mother's Day. You know, God made promises to us, and here are some of his, his promises that he made to us. He said, I will be with you. I will protect you. I will be your strength. I will answer you. I will provide for you. I will give you peace. And I will always love you. You know, God is a God of love. In John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his very best. And you know, to God's promises, we say yes and amen. Yes to his will and his way, to his word. And from us, amen. His word is true. So on this Mother's Day, I want to wish all of you a very happy mother's day god bless you and be well in this Amen. moment with god we celebrate we honor our mothers because it's mother's day we celebrate our mothers those mothers who are resting with our father in heaven we celebrate our mothers who are alive in our hearts. We celebrate all the mothers that are enduring and encouraging us on this day that's with us. And we also in, want to take a moment to acknowledge and say thank you for those that God has uh, positioned to be motherly towards us. God bless you mothers family and, and children, love upon your mothers today, especially today, but always and every day, be thankful for your mothers. God bless you. And again, happy Mother's Day to all. Well, praise God, everybody. Praise the Lord. This is a good day to be serving the Lord. I just want to take a minute and just encourage every mother under the sound of my voice. As Mother's Day is coming up, this is a wonderful time to just say thank you. You know, when I thought about Mother's Day, those two words came to mind. Thank you. Thank you for everything that you do. Thank you for who you are. I first of all, thank God for the vision of motherhood and what he's given us giving us something so precious and so powerful that we are created beings to bring forth life. And for those who are mothers and those who are mothering, we just want to take a minute here at Mount Zion to say thank you 
to everyone across Mount Zion, across the nation, in the world. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. We honor you. We salute you for all of the work that you've shown, all of the sacrifices that you have made. And we're believing God for that word in Jeremiah 29, 11, that he has plans for us to prosper us, not to harm us and to give us hope and a future. And we thank God in the name of our Lord, in the name of our Savior, our King, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, and thank you, everyone, for doing it what you do, providing love straight from the throne of God. Amen. Amen. Let's give God some praise for that special tribute to our mothers. Why don't you just stand on your feet and let's just turn our Bibles to the book of Malachi 3, 6 through 12. Malachi 3, 6 through 12, as we stand at the attention of God, it's giving time in God's house. What shall I render unto God for all of his blessings. If you're blessed in the house, can you just say amen? Amen. amen. God has blessed us, and so this amen. is our time to give back to God. Oh, yeah. The Bible says this it says, For I am the Lord, I change not. Therefore, ye sons of Jacob are not consumed. And you say, Eating from the days of your fathers, you have gone away from my ordinance, and have not kept them. Return unto me, and I will return unto you, said the Lord of hosts. For ye say, Wherein shall we return? Will a man rob God? Yet ye have robbed me. But ye say, Wherein have we robbed thee? In tithes and offerings. Ye are cursed with the curse. Ye have robbed me, even this whole nation. Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in mine house. And prove me now herewith, saith the Lord of hosts. If I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, then there shall not be room enough to receive it. And I will rebuke the devourer for your sake, and he shall not destroy the fruits of your ground, neither shall your vine cast her fruit before the time in the field, said the Lord of hosts. Let's read 12 together. And, and all, all nations, nations shall, shall call you blessed, for ye shall be a delightsome man, man, said the Lord, Lord of hosts. hosts. Let us bow our heads in a moment of oh, thanks, yes. thinking unto God today, thanking God for all of his blessings, thanking God that as the Bible says, we can receive a blessing the Bible talks about in this text that he will open up the windows of heaven and pour us out so many blessings that we can't receive it all. Will you thank God right now in your own special way for his blessings? Are there any blessed people? Just say amen. amen. If there's any real blessed people, just say hallelujah. hallelujah. If there's anybody who's thankful, can you just say thank you, Jesus? Thank you, Jesus. So right now. We lift up our voices toward the hills again in thanks unto God for all that he's given us. And as we give back to God, we're asking that he would just continue to bless the gift and bless the giver. Heavenly Father, we thank you again for tithe. We thank you for offering, God. And so we ask that you would bless the tithe and offering. In the precious name of Jesus, we pray. And all God's people said, amen. Amen. And amen. I'm going to ask all those that are giving a tithe and offering, you can come right now to the tithing baskets. And the ushers are coming out in the parking lot and if you're online go to mcop.org and you can bless no God with your gift what you're going through you're gonna make it God's gonna see you through pick your head up put a smile on your face this is another test and it won't last always so get ready get ready for your blessing for your, your blessing
God, I bless him. Let us all stand. All things come of thee, O Lord, and of thine own have we given thee. Oh, lift your hands in the air and say it today. All things come of thee, O Lord. to see you on this morning. If you have your Bibles with you, you can turn it to the book of Joshua, tap, chapter 24. Joshua in the Old Testament, chapter 24, even in your cars, even online. Joshua, <clears throat> chapter 24, and we're going to read verse 14 through 15. But before I begin, I want to again recognize all of our mothers. If you're a mother, why don't you just stand up if you're in the congregation. All of our mothers, we want to salute you today. Put your hands together for all of our mothers. Come on, let's lift up all the mothers. Honk your horns for the mothers. Amen, amen. Today is your day, and you are special on this special day. So let's read again Joshua 24, 14 through 15. And before we go into the word, let's just bow our heads in a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we just thank you, God, for this opportunity to dwell into the word of God. Father, speak to our mind, our body, and our spirit. Hide me behind your cross today as I preach your word. I love you, we thank you, and we lift you up today and magnify you. In Jesus' name we pray. And all the followers of Jesus said, amen. Amen. The Bible says this in Joshua chapter 24, 14 through 15. The Bible says this. It says, Now fear the Lord and serve him with all faithfulness. Throw away the gods your ancestors worshipped beyond the Euphrates River and in Egypt and serve the Lord. Somebody say, serve the Lord. But if serving the Lord seems undesirable to you, then choose for yourselves this day whom you will serve. Whether the gods your ancestors served beyond the Euphrates or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you are living. But this text says this, but as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. Can somebody claim that with me? Say, but as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. Today I just want to take a quick moment to teach and to preach from the subject of the keys to building a strong family. The keys to building a strong family. You know, years ago I was having a discussion about how to spiritually influence your children with a group of parents here in the church. And, and as we were talking, one old mother of the church got on to our conversation as we were discussing ways to impact our family and so immediately she stopped and heard us talking and she offered some advice she said this and I thought it was very profound she said my husband and I developed the spiritual commitment of our children 20 years before they were born and we were so intrigued by that answer and, and, and so the question was asked to her how did you influence your children that far ahead of time 20 years before they were born and she answered back and said, my husband and I, we did it by committing our lives to Jesus Christ. Committing our lives to Jesus Christ. You see, that's the problem in our world today. There are too many families that aren't committed to Jesus Christ. See, that's the key I want to tell you to a successful family. Just as Joshua said, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. See, that's one thing that this text is about. Joshua is giving his last talk, if I can give you some background to this text. And he's teaching the people the importance of having a covenant with God. Even our president recently released what they call his family, his American family plan to address historic injustices. Because there is no secret, I want to tell you today, there is no secret why we see the challenges that we see today in our communities. There is no secret why children and youth are struggling. There is no secret that there are gaps in the family. 
There is no secret to what will make our communities a better place we live in and keep our church relevant today and, and keep our young people educated and what will give them what we call a healthy start versus them having to catch up all the time. It all starts with strong families. How many of you believe it starts with strong families? Give God some praise. Strong families. Truth is, uh, we consider our church a family church. Amen, Mount Zion? We're a family church. A family church uh, is, is kind to people. A family church has family-oriented people within the church. If, if you don't have an aunt, there's an auntie-type figure in the church. A family church invites people into our facility to do some good things. A, a, a family church has resources available to the community like a food pantry or like a kitchen. A, a family church looks after our elders like, like we do in the nursing homes and, and with our hospital partnership. A, a family loves to bless the lives of other people. How many know that when you bless somebody else, the blessings come back to you? And so also, what does a family church do? A family church prays for people and, and provides an opportunity for prayer like we're trying to do with the prayer room. A family church builds a community garden like we've built in the back where we dedicate it to prayer and for people to go and have reflection and peace during a rough time. That's what a family church is all about. I don't care what nobody says, but family is important. Family is important. And basically what I want to say today is that, is that as Christians, it's our job to promote families and to build strong families. I was talking to a school counselor and teacher, teacher not too long ago, and, and I asked him, I said this, I said, I said, what do the kids in your school wish for? And of course, I thought they would say that the kids risk for a bicycle or a television set or, or a PlayStation or, or a trip to Disney World. But much to my surprise, 20 out of the 30 kids that were talked to about this in the class wish for things to get better in their family. One kid said, I wish my, my parents wouldn't fight. And another kid said, I, I wish my father would, would come back. And another kid said, I wish my grandmother and grandfather would spend more time with me. A, another kid said, I wish my family had more cookouts so that I could meet more of my cousins. What does that tell us? That tells us that family is important. So that's why we want to lift up mothers today and the matriarchs of our family. Again, can we salute our mothers today? Put your hands together for our mothers. One more time, we are saluting mothers as matriarchs of the family. And see, families have a lot of dynamics outside of just mother and father. There's an, there's an extended family. There are blended families. But, but most of, of the family is the nucleus that, that is basically built between individuals, between people to bring about Christ-like values that will last for future generations. So I just want to give you a few strategies to build strong families. First of all, and I'm, I'm not going to be long on this. First of all, families thrive on commitment. Somebody say commitment. commitment. Strong families have a sense of being a team. They have a family identity and they have unities. Families like the motto, family first. Uh, families work together to make the family successful. They relish in their name. They are the, the Reed family, the Mirabel family, the Watkins family. They are the Johnson family, the, the Jackson family, the Macon family. You don't neglect, don't neglect your family name. And see, if family commits themselves to God, it will complement uh, their commitment to each other. So strong families thrive on commitment. But another point that we must never forget is that strong families spend time together. How many of you know you got to spend time together? 1,500 children were asked this question. What makes families happy? And over 90% of them gave the same answer, doing things together. See, the Bible says in Psalm 68, verse 6, the first part of it, it says, God places the lonely in what? God places the lonely in families. So remember, God has designated you in such a way that you need other people around you and in your life. See, God has put you together to bond and to, to strengthen and to fulfill each other's needs to battle the human nature of loneliness. See, you're not in a family just, have, just to have a place to eat and to sleep and to watch TV. 
You're in a family to grow together. That only happens when you do what? When you spend time together. I think about it when my daughter has extracurricular activities or my son plays in his games. We go to the events. I remember when I was younger, my parents supported what we did. And it's not because it was the most exciting thing in the world. It was because they knew that it meant a lot to us to know that they were standing on the sidelines. See, if I can make a point to you today, that's what our kids need today. They need somebody standing on the sidelines and rooting for them. And so time together is important. How many of you are willing to stand on the sidelines right now? Give God some praise if you're willing to stand on the sidelines. So also, what does that mean? That means husbands need to hang out with their wives and wives need to do things with their husbands. So you got to take her out. You got to go for a walk or whatever it is. We got to do things together. My, my buddy said the other day, he said, you got to do this. You got to take her out to eat. And he said, don't take her to McDonald's either. He said, take her to Burger King. I said, man, you about to get me in trouble. You about to get me hurt. I see it often. The point I'm trying to make is that I bury families often. And I, the first thing that people say when you bury a family member is, I wish I spent more time with them. I wish I spent more time with them. The point is that we, almost, we only have so much time in this life and we need to spend it wisely and spend it together. Now, the third thing I don't want you to forget is that strong families show appreciation. Somebody say appreciation. Think about when was the last time that you expressed to someone in your family that I appreciate you. Grandma, mother, I appreciate you. I remember an old brother, he used to go to this church and he used to crack me up. He would say, Reverend Macon, I, I love when I go home. He said, I love it when I go home. I said, why is that? He said, because when I go home, it's the one place that I don't have to be nice to people. And I said, man, you got it all messed up. See, when you go home, you should be just as nice at home, if not nicer, than when you're outside. You see, a show of appreciation makes your family more secure. And see, that's what God is looking to bring to the life of the family. He's looking to bring security in your life. That's what we want mothers today to feel. We want our mothers to feel secure. Don't you want your mama to feel secure? Somebody say amen. amen. Never forget, appreciation breeds security. Now, strong families also do another thing. Strong families also communicate, communicate. You know, there was an article in the New York Times that said the average couple that had been married 10 years or longer only communicate with each other 37 minutes a week. That's just over a half an hour and over a half of an hour out of 167 hours in a week. See, never forget, there's no replacement for communication. You got to call somebody today. Maybe it's your aunt, maybe it's your uncle, maybe it's your son, or maybe it's your daughter. Not just on holidays, but we got to communicate regularly because strong families do what? They communicate. And one thing I want to give you when you're, uh, when you're feeling like you're out of hope, this is what strong families do. This is what you got to do. Strong families learn how to cope. Strong families learn how to cope. Too many people give up way too soon. Strong families look for the positive even in a crisis and they pull together. How many remember mama pulling things together? Mama pulling things together. They're, they're flexible. They draw on what we call spiritual strength, knowing that God wants families to always reconcile. And if you always reconcile, you'll be able to cope. And you remember these truths. And this is a hard one. I've got some witnesses to this today, though. The truth of the matter is, you've got to remember this. That's why we've got to cope. Because every family has problems. Every family goes through. Every family got some issues. It's just simple as that. His family got problems. Her family's got problems. All of God's families have problems. And the truth of the matter is you can't avoid them, but you can process them properly. You, you can look at the first family and realize that they were not problem free. The first family of Adam and Eve, when you look at them, they sinned in disobedience to God. They actually started problems and now problems have become a part of life. But it's not about the problems. It's all about how you respond to the problems. See, sometimes you got to look at your crisis like it's an opportunity. It can sometimes be an opportunity to bring you back together again. How many know that sometimes when you struggle, God is bringing you to something greater than what you were going through? See, just like anything, 
See, just like anything God sends us through, there's always a purpose and a plan not to make you bitter. But I want to proclaim it today. God wants to make your family better today. See, that's why you got to claim it today. Is there anybody here that's willing to claim it today? You got to claim these words. As for me and my house, we're going to do what? We're going to serve the Lord. You got to remember this. Can somebody say, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. See, your house, your family, serving the Lord means that Jesus is at the center of it all. You got to remember, if Jesus is at the center of it all, you'll have peace in your life. If Jesus is at the center of it all, you're going to have some joy in your life. If Jesus is at the center of it all, he's the shepherd of your life. If Jesus is at the center of it all, he's the insurance that you need. If Jesus is at the center of your life, he will be a fortress when you're up against some tough things. When Jesus is at the center of your life I want to tell you he will give you the rest that you need if anybody needs a physician put Jesus at the center of your life if anybody needs some comfort put Jesus at the center of your family if anybody needs some strength you got to put Jesus at the center of it all and he will bring the refuge that you need and see the truth of the matter is if Jesus is at the center of it all there's no weapons formed against you that's going to prosper that means this, that a family that prays together does what? A family that worships together does what? Stays together. A family that is committed does what? Works things out. A family that spends time together what? Makes it. A family that shows appreciation stays together. A family that communicates does what? Gets through the stuff. A family that learns to cope will stand the test of time, but a family that serves the Lord will build unbreakable bonds. And see, that's what we're looking for. Most important, if you put Jesus at the center of it all, if you put Jesus at the center of it all, you will produce what we call good fruit. How many of you know that you want some good fruit? Come on, you can give them some praise. Good fruit. What does that mean? It means, as Paul put in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 8, when you produce good fruit, it means when you go through rough patches, you won't be crushed by them. It means when you get bewildered, you won't be in despair. It means when waters get rough, God will guide you back to safety. It means with Jesus at the center of your family, your family won't be abandoned, your family won't be knocked down, and your family won't be knocked out. You'll be more than a conqueror because you will bear good fruit. And how do you know that you're producing good fruit? Joshua said it in my text. You know it if you live by the mantra that as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. And so I want to ask you today, will you stand on your feet and proclaim it today that as for you and your house, you're going to serve the Lord. Will you serve him today? Give God some praise right now. If you'll serve, serve the Lord. Listen, I just want you to bow your heads. I just want to pray for families right now before we go. I just want to pray for you. God put it on my heart to just speak to families today on this Mother's Day. We love our mothers and we know that to have a great mother, you need a great family around us. You need a great family around us. So as we advocate for strong families, Joshua said, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We bless you. We thank you for all of those that are here today. Father, we release protection, provision, and grace and mercy on the family members who hear my voice today. We commit to put Jesus at the center of our families. Father, we know you have plans for them, plans to prosper them and give them peace. We pray that you answer their prayers. We pray over the children that are here today and their children's children right now. We pray over the generations. We pray for the healing of our families. We pray that no weapon formed against them will prosper today. And we celebrate our mothers today. We celebrate even our fathers today. We celebrate our children today. 
We celebrate our aunts and uncles and cousins and grandparents knowing, God, that what you bring together, no man can tear apart. So, Father, we proclaim today and we say it together. As for me, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. If you believe it today, I want you to give God some praise in this place as our pastor comes right now. Thank you. Amen. And remain standing. Give Pastor Larry a great big hand. What a marvelous sermon that is. Here is a son talking about mother. Here is a son who's looking at his mother. Here's a son who loves his mother. Here is a son who knows what it means to be raised by a good mother. Here is a son who has developed into a good son because he has had a good mother. And in a few weeks, he's going to have a good father. Amen, somebody. As you bow your heads in a word of thanks unto God, even now, you're here today. Jesus, Jesus, something. Give me something. P pick it up just a little bit. Amen. Here we are at the end of Mother's Day. I came to church, and I don't know about you, but I saw one of the most wonderful sight that, there, that I could see. You probably saw an ugly sight. I saw a wonderful sight. I saw it snowing and raining. And it was one of the most beautiful snow that I've ever seen this entire winter. You saw an ugly sight. I saw a beautiful sight. And I said to myself, I said, whatever God sends me my way, it's always beautiful. Isn't it always beautiful? It, it's, it's, it's a mother day that I will not forget. And I want you to go home and I want you to make sure that this mother's day is a mother's day that your mother will never forget. Hook up with your mother. Call her again. Tell her how much you love her. Tell her how much you appreciate her. But tell her some of the stories that are indebitably in your mind, those things that are in your mind. Tell her some of those stories about what you did. In fact, you ought to confess some things that she didn't know you did that you did. Have I got a witness in the house? I'm trying to tell you, you can have joy even in the midst of these kinds of days, even in the midst of snowy days, you can have joy even in the midst of that appreciate your mother your mother may not have been the best but guess what you have not been the best either but you're done the best that you know how to do amen somebody so i want you to celebrate mothers here's what god laid, laid on my heart you're on earth with mother take the advantage of being on earth with your mother you're on earth with mother take the advantage of being on earth with mother but remember life does not stop on earth that there is life beyond the grave and, and so you want to be with your mother after you are on earth with your mother here you want to meet her in heaven if she's in heaven you want to meet her my mother's gone she's in heaven and i'm gonna meet my mother in heaven have i got a witness in the house so i'm gonna enjoy her on earth here in heaven now here's something that some some of you haven't thought about not only am I going to enjoy her in heaven, but heaven there is a temporary setting that one day we're going to come back to this earth. Y'all didn't know that. Y'all looking at me like I'm crazy. The Bible says that Jesus, that God is going to reconstruct this earth and he's going to make this earth perfect. And this is going to be an earth where there's no pandemic. This is going to be an earth where there's no diseases. This is going to be an earth where there's no violence. This is going to be an earth where nobody has drive-by and killings. This is going to be an earth where there's no more uh, problems. This is going to be a perfect earth. One day, God is going to come back and reconstruct this entire earth. And it's going to be a perfect earth. And all the saints who have died are going to come back to this earth and live on this earth what I'm trying to tell you is I don't want to come back here and live on this earth and my mama is not on earth or I don't meet my mother on earth again have I got a witness in the house I want to be with my daddy I want to be with my mother I want to be with my brothers I want to be with my church members I want to be with my friends I want to be with those who love God and you cannot come back to this third phase unless you are in Christ why don't you bow your heads right now? Whisper a word of prayer unto God even right now. Whisper a word of prayer unto God even right now. Talk to God right now. The Bible says those who are in Christ, no man can pluck you out of my hand. 
And those of you who are looking at me online, I know you're saying, Reverend, you're crazy. You mean to say one day we're going to come back, we're going to leave heaven up there and then come back to this earth? The Bible says that God made earth for mankind, for womankind. So this is our ultimately setting. And guess what? We're going to have the king of kings sitting there residing and presiding over us. And that's Jesus Christ. He's going to come back and he's going to rule and super rule and there would be no sin on this earth. So one day... I'm coming back here to a perfect place, a perfect house, a perfect community, a perfect city, a perfect state, a perfect country. There will be no more crying, no more dying, and I'm coming back to this earth. How is that made possible? Through God himself and through my acceptance of Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. Maybe you want to do it a second time and just tell God, God, come into my heart. Save me right now. I want to be a part of your kingdom. I don't want to be separated from you ever. And as for me and my house, starting right now, I want to serve the Lord. I don't care what the other folk want to do. I'm going to serve the Lord. I'm going to wake up in the morning. I'm going to talk to you and tell you how grateful I am for your watching over me all night long. When I go through the day, I'm going to have a prayer break and just start to praise in you for all the great things that you have done. I'm going to bed at night with my mind stayed on you. I want to serve you. I want to wake up. Give me my assignment in the morning so that at nighttime I can say I have fulfilled the assignment that you have given me for that day. That's what serving God as Pastor Larry is talking about. Get into that kind of a family, create that kind of a family, and I guarantee you that you will have a family like none other. Oh God, right now, come into the hearts of these, your hearers right now, those who are on uh, listening to us afar off, Go, those who are listening to us on virtual, those who are in the car right now. I pray, oh God, that you will electrify the car presence with your Holy Spirit. Let them feel you right there in their car. Remind them, God, how much you love them. And those who are inside of the sanctuary, remind us how much you love us so much that someone said you couldn't be any and everywhere, though you are. You did leave us someone who could be just like you a good mother God we thank you for every mother in this church and outside of this church and now God I pray the recreation that you're going to ultimately have for us will begin right now families will shift sons and daughters will shift husbands will shift grandfathers will shift all the family will shift all of a sudden because they have you in their heart in the name of of Jesus in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus as you continue praying if you're here today and you've accepted Christ for a second time I want you to call us at the at the church at or either send us a, a, a notice letting us know that you have given your life to Christ if you are a child I want you to be baptized we're going back into baptizing folk at a distance and safely give God some praise for that yes sir we're going down in the water and it's a sign that something has happened on the inside of you. And if you're here today and you want to be baptized, I want you to call the church and say, listen, I want to be totally committed to Christ. Don't wait till the battle is over. You can shout right now. Have I got a witness in the house? Amen. And we've got one of the best mothers in this church. She is the mother of my children. That's none other than Mrs. Macon. And we're going to invite her to come up and give us some last words and She's doing a marvelous work. She had all of these flowers and all of these things for y'all, inside and outside. Amen. Amen. I'm a good father because she's a good mother. Praise the Lord. It's just a blessing to be here today. Thank God for his grace and mercy. Uh, the month of March was designated as International Women's Month. And one of the themes was women are essential. And that is so very true, ladies. We just celebrated Easter and we know one essential woman was Mary because she birthed the greatest person in the world, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Can we give a shout out to another essential person, our Vice President Kamala Harris. For the first time in American history, we have the heart of a woman 
over our country. Thank God for that. Women are essential. This vaccine that we are taking right now, a woman was essential in putting it together. Thank you for her. And you too, ladies, all ladies here in the sanctuary, in the cars, online, you too are essential. Always remember that in your heart. You are essential in this world, in your community, in your homes, and you're essential to this church. So I would like to take this time to wish all of our amazing and essential ladies, all these ladies on stage who have been essential all through this whole pandemic, thank you for your warm spirit that you give out every Sunday morning. And I just want to wish you all a happy and blessed Mother's Day. It is a blessing to celebrate with all of you today. And as we always do, we always try to recognize our most senior mother in the sanctuary today. And I don't know, but I know our older senior moms took a break at the 830 service. But let me see if we have anybody 90 and over in the sanctuary at 11 o'clock service. Oh. How old are you, Mother Bates? You don't mind telling when you're 90 and over. It's a blessing. How old is she, Billy? 90. Thanks for being here, Mother Bates. Do we have anybody 89? 88? Oh my gosh! We have a little something for you, Mother. Thanks for being here. 89. 88? 87? Mother Wright? She said, I'm not ashamed. I mean, <laughs> it's a blessing to see you here today. We just want to thank you that God bless, blessing us with your presence today. We have a little something for you. And I think we have one more. Is there anybody here that's 86? 85? 84? Just tell me how old you are. Somebody in the 80s? Okay, 79? No, you're not. I want to see your driver's license. Julie Ann, God bless you. She said, that's why I'm sitting down. But look, it, you, ladies, you are a blessing to this world. You are essential. That's right. Give yourself a hand. Thank you for being here today. And it's raining outside, but that's okay. It's sunshine in our hearts. And we have flowers for you outside in the foyer. Please feel free to take your rose and a gift for you. And I think we have extra if you know someone else that would like one. God bless you and thank you for this time. Amen. Give our First Lady a great big hand, praise. Eternal God, our Father, we thank you again for allowing us to be here in the church to worship you in spirit and in truth. Whatever day it is, it is your day, and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. Now, God, let mothers go out remind, being reminded how great they are, the spirit that they have. We thank you, God, for the hard work they do for us in the house and outside of the house. God, I pray that you will let them know that there is a special angel that's hanging around them right now because they are women of faith. Bless them now. In Jesus' name we pray. And all the people of God shouted, amen. Give God a great big hand praise. Give your neighbor a wave offering right now. Amen. Consider yourself dismissed and hopefully you'll distance yourself as you leave out. Thank you, choir. Thank you, usher. Ah!